Welcome, my friends, to Inside the Minds of Authors. I'm Daisy Gomez, and I'm thrilled you're joining me today for a fun conversation with a passionate author. We're kicking off the program like it's our tradition with a short reading from the feature book. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. My name is Rose Garcia, and I am from Houston, Texas. I write young adult fiction, fantasy, and I am super excited to be here with my girl, DC. We actually have known each other for a while on social media, but we met at NerdCon two years ago, but at the NerdCon this year, we actually like hung out. I'm so excited about that. We got to like chit chat and talk and hang out and share food and everything. <laughs> I'm excited to be here on her podcast talking about books and the first book I have a portal fantasy that I am in the middle of publishing right now. It is a four book fantasy series and I'm going to read the prologue from the first book. And the first book is called Fay Away. And it is book one in the Fay Bloodlines series, which is set up in sets of duologies, which we can talk about that later. So here's the Fay Away prologue. Through the thin trees between the bark and brush, I could see the shimmers hovering over Torch Lake. The mysterious glowing orbs that provided a gateway from the fairy realm to the human realm were a rare sight to behold. No one was allowed a viewing without permission. Even then, such access was rarely granted, even for me. We should not be here, Celise, Jade whispered. A palace guard and my best friend since we were little, Jade reluctantly indulged my foolish pursuits, including my request to access the area, showing me unguarded paths to the lake. Not that I asked too often, but mother and father were away on official business of Stronghaven, as they almost always were as the High King and High Queen of Favenly. And my twin sister Melina and I were left alone for a few days with our minder, Maid Rel. After finishing our morning lessons, Melina retreated inside for a nap while I sought out adventure, and there was nothing more exciting than the shimmers. Oh, please, Jade, I rolled my eyes at the tall, slender, silver-haired, violet-eyed Faye. Even though his allegiance to duty was boring, I most certainly did not want him to get in trouble. I lifted my skirt and pulled out the black onyx knife I kept strapped at my thigh. I pressed it to his neck. If we should be caught out here, you may tell everyone I held you at knife point. He swatted my hand away. Come now, Celise. You know I am rising in the ranks. If discovered out here with you violating my directives, I could lose my position. His gaze scanned the area. Besides, you know full well unauthorized lake visits are on the rise. It is not safe. Then he muttered under his breath, as if anyone would believe you could best me with a knife. Although I knew Jade was right, I did not think a quick visit would be dangerous. I could handle myself. Plus, I had him with me. I put the knife back in its place and lowered myself on the ground and placed my head on my hands at this settling in to watch a play or a performance. Let me have a few moments and then we can leave. After a long pause, Jade sighed like I knew he would, then joined me on the lush grass. What are you even looking for? He waved his hand about. There are sentinels posted along the perimeter as usual. The shimmers are floating along the water as usual. There is grass, there is sky, there are trees. Everything is the same. You see nothing, Jade, I mumbled, keeping my gaze on the glowing orbs in the distance. I, on the other hand, see magic and beauty and possibility. I had always been curious about the human realm and often dreamed of going there, 
so I could see and experience the things Maine Rail had taught me and Melina in her lessons. You are impossible, Celise. I shrugged as I kept my gaze on the lake. Perhaps I am, but what is wrong with wanting to see another world where people watch moving picture stories on giant white screens, travel the skies in oversized jet-propelled airplanes, and the seas on floating ships as big as villages? Villages, Jade, do you not wonder about the human realm? I do not, and you would do well to banish those fancies. Humans are our enemy, Celise. As a princess of Fabenly, you should not forget it. I threw him a curious look. You do not want to know what pizza tastes like? A clanging rang out. Yelling met my sharp ears. My attention zipped to the lake where the sentinels were fighting three fey with spears and swords. Thunderation, not again, Jade spat out, jumping to his feet. Get back to the palace, he ordered as he rushed toward the melee. He did not have to tell me twice. I knew the wrath of my mother, the High Queen. If she found out I had been out here, she would not be pleased at all. I had heard tales of how she could kill with her eyes when she dropped her glamour. It was not something I wanted to see. Lifting my skirt, knowing that Jade and the Sentinels could handle themselves as they always did, I dashed off. I zigzagged between trees, jumped over rocks, and ducked low-hanging branches. When the palace spires came into view and the grounds began resembling a well-kept garden, I slowed my stride. I thought of the three fey who were skirmishing with the sentinels. No doubt they were dead by now, since anyone approaching the lake waters was executed on sight. But who would attempt to breach Torch Lake at midday? It was a fool's errand at any time, but doubly so in full daylight. Most breaches occurred at nightfall. I would have to ask Jade about it later. As I continued at a normal pace, a lone white feather drifted in the wind and caught my eye. It twirled and danced as the breeze directed it to a cluster of nearby bushes. And when it came to rest on a pile of red and brown leaves, looking angelic and pristine against the earthen backdrop, I thought I should have it. Surely such a signing was not happenstance. Approaching the quill, I bent down for it as a shimmer caught my eye. My breathing hitched. My hand trembled. Every shimmer had been moved to Torch Lake after the Great Shimmer War several hundred years ago. Was this one overlooked? Had it drifted away from the others while no one noticed? Or maybe it had recently separated from the stratus and floated down from the sky. Scanning my surroundings, I realized I was alone with the lost shimmer and a chance at a private viewing of the human realm. A chance I might never have again. Hi everyone, and welcome to season three of Inside the Lives of Authors. I'm your host, DC, and I'm thrilled you guys are joining us today. I have another amazing and fabulous author, the great Miss Rose Garcia. And yes, she is one of my favorite girls, obviously, doing some fantasy, absolutely ruling this world. So I am so happy she's joining us. Hi, Madame, how are you? Hey, I am so great. I am so excited to be here. Such a pleasure. You are in one of my list of like, I need to get Rose on the show. So the fact that we connected, the fact that it worked out is fabulous. So I know everybody's just as excited as I am. You are not just a YA fantasy writer. You are a USA Today bestselling author. So you have been working for a while. You're full time. You're living the dream that everybody talks about. But let's get to the books first. What is this series about? Because you know it's going to be bad. I was like, don't do that. Girl, stop, stop. What? Oh, you're going to do that. She's going to touch it. Why are you going to touch it? Tell us about this series. What is it all about? Where did it come from? Oh, gosh. Okay. So that's a loaded question. And uh, let me figure out how to begin answering. Okay. So I actually have three series working right now. And I have my initial series is my final life series, which is a YA contemporary fantasy about a girl who's had multiple past lives 
she is tracked down and hunted in each life by a supernatural villain. And the series is the story of her final life and her quest for survival. That's my first series. After that series, it's four book series. After that series, I decided to take a character from that series and put her into a shared universe called Havenwood Falls. And Havenwood Falls is a fictional town in Colorado where supernaturals live in secret. And so Infinity, my character from the Final Life series, ends up in Havenwood Falls. And there is a reaper on her heels and a wolf shifter who wants to protect her. That is her story. And she is featured in two novellas, in two academy anthologies, and in a few other holiday anthologies. So she's pretty big in that universe. When I finished writing my, I guess my fourth novella in Havenwood Falls, COVID hit. Everything kind of came to a screeching halt. And it also just so happened that at the time that COVID hit, I started participating in a mastermind with some other fantasy authors. And we would meet every Monday as a way just to stay in touch with each other and our goals and what we were writing and also talk about the industry. And then, boom, with COVID, we became much more than that right? Because the world was collapsing and we were all, everyone was home. And so they became like this huge support group in so many ways. As we were talking and we're just talking about trends and ideas and things about fantasy in the market, Faye was becoming humongous, right? Everyone was writing Faye and reading Faye. And so we all decided we were going to write Faye books. It was something that the collective came up with together, my little group. And so I did not even know what I was going to write after Havenwood Falls. And so I said, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Not really knowing anything about it. And also not even having read much Faye. We started being like just smart about what we wanted to do, right? Instead of just jumping in gangbusters with ideas, we kind of started really thinking about okay, well, let's read a lot of fey books. So we were reading fey books and we were kind of understanding the world and the universe. And, you know, fairy tale retellings were so big. We started doing all that. When it was time for me to actually sit down and decide, okay, what is my fey book going to be about? One thing I wanted it to be about was a Hispanic character because all of my books feature Hispanic characters. Well, except for Infinity, she's not Hispanic. But she was a fan favorite, so I gave her her spinoff. But the Final Life series has a huge influence of Hispanic characters. The love interest is Hispanic. I, of course, love him, Trent Avila. So when I started thinking about doing my Fay books, I wanted to bring in my Hispanic characters. And so I decided to write about Trent's cousin, Julio. And he is my human guy. And so when my fae princess, Celise, sees the shimmer, finds the shimmer, which is the portal to the human realm, and she opens it up and she looks through, she sees Julio. They are the characters, those two, Julio and Celise, are my main characters in my fae bloodlines, first generation duology. It's their love story. Everything that happens to them with the fey realm and the human realm and everything that's going to go down, right? So then after I finished that duology, I was like, okay, I am now going to write about their daughter. So she's second generation. So her duology is the fey bloodlines legacy duology. I just published her book, Fey Hunted. And now I'm writing her second book, Fey Rising. And that's going to be a duology. It's the Fae Bloodline series with the two duologies. It's super exciting. <laughs> Such an incredible glimpse of your world. And all of your works very quickly and how they all tie together, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Like I've been listening to different authors and how they created the universe and tie them all together. So their fan base can get a huge treat in all of these things. So when you did this, did you realize you had one giant universe that just kind of crossed and played with each other? Actually, yes. I intentionally wanted an interconnected series. 
And I don't even remember who it was that even mentioned that and it stuck in my brain. Somebody somewhere who's super prolific and very successful said that and it stuck with me. I was like, okay, I am doing that because I want this Final Life series fan base to trickle over into my Fae Bloodlines. And when I'm finished with the Fae Bloodlines, I'm going to do another interconnected series. And so I want it all to somehow overlap in some way. And I actually call it my Garcia verse. <laughs> I have a page on my website called the Garcia verse where you can actually see all of my books. And there's a, like a little explanation of how they're all connected because they're all connected in some way. So that was intentional. Yeah. I so love it. Today I woke up trying to figure it out. I was like, I'm getting ready to start publishing two series. And I was like, how are these tied to my universe? I, exactly the same question. I was like, can I tie them? The fact that you did it on purpose is amazing. Brilliant, honey. <laughs> yeah, it was somebody else's idea. But yeah, I ran with it because, you know, I'm also building this world. And like right now with my Fae bloodlines, I've got my human realm, of course, and then I have my fate realm, which is called Favenly. It's beautiful, but it's also very dangerous. And when I'm finished with this Fae Bloodlines series, I'm going to write in the future and it's going to be in Favenly. So uh, I'm going to do a big time jump and it's going to be a epic fantasy. And I don't even think my characters are even going to cross into the human realm. I think I'm going to keep them all in the fantasy world. But I don't know. I might change that idea later. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so amazing. And you just honestly kind of gave me a perspective. I was like, I'm thinking I need to tie all these babies, at least all my urban fantasies all together into the I same think, universe. Yes. And it doesn't even have to be the same universe. It can be the same bloodline it could be the same family members so like right now it's the avila family because they're a family of curanderos which are healers that have like some psychic abilities like julio's mom is a very famous curandera in austin texas and people come to her from all over the world to connect with passed on loved ones she's even worked with the fbi to find missing people i mean she is like the real deal and so julio and a lot of the other avila family members get a lot of their strength through their bloodline i absolutely love it i think it's so much fun so is it why a why young adult you know this could have been an adult series this could have gone anywhere what made you decide to do young adults you know that is such a good question the thing that I love about young adult is everything is so powerful. Every single emotion is so strong. The coming of age, the first love, the first heartache. It's just a powerful, powerful feelings in these characters. And I love that. And I love reading young adult myself, but it's upper YA. So it really crosses a cusp between young adult and adult. My characters are 18. They are in high school, seniors. So they're straddling different worlds, the adult world and the young adult world. And they age through. So like in the Final Life series, my fourth book, they're in college. And right now in Faye Bloodlines, you know, my character, Gabriella, she is in high school. She's a senior, but she is also going to be aging out. So it kind of is a cusp. And I love, love, love all of those intense moments, all of the firsts, you know, in a young adult's life. So that's why I write young adult. <laughs> it is absolutely powerful. And it is such strong emotions. I love the genre, but as an adult, I'm like, I am so happy I'm not that age because there's so much that comes with it. Everything is, as you said, intense. Everything's huge. Yeah, everything is so intense, everything. And I really like that because it's really fun to write. It's super fun to write. It is such an incredible age. And sometimes I really want to tell them, it's like, you will make through this. I promise you're going to get through it. High school is only four years. I know it feels like your entire world. It's not. 
but all yeah. I can do is we're old and not listening to us. I don't care. We don't know what's going on. We've never been there before. I'm like, yes, we just came out to this world at this age, grown. Never yeah. been there before. Yeah. And they're so smart. They know everything and we don't know anything. It's like, okay, good luck. <laughs> it's a fun part of seeing them. And it's as all the things come with time and the cycle kind of repeats itself. And now we get to see it and you go in. Oh, that's what my parents were talking about. Yep. Got it. Exactly. exactly. All makes sense. Switching gears. Let's talk a little bit about you. How long have you been writing okay. for? I started writing in 2012. I've been writing a while. Golly, that sounds like so long ago. So the thing about wanting to write, and I think most writers will say this, I've always wanted to write, right? Every author I think has has had that answer for me it was nothing that I ever really thought of as being a viable career I never thought about that when I was growing up my parents wanted me to be a lawyer and it was like just drilled into my brain lawyer 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 and so I became a lawyer and the thing about being a lawyer is you know what is it reading and writing and that was kind of like my passion. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to take these skills and these things that I love and be a lawyer. I'm super extrovert. I don't mind talking to anyone, anywhere, any place, anytime. So it kind of fit my personality being a lawyer. And I enjoyed it. And I really, really liked it. But in the back of my mind, I kept remembering my little dream of wanting to be a writer. For me, the thing that really motivated me was reading Twilight. I will never forget. I was at a friend's beach house and she's also a lawyer and a dear dear friend and she had the twilight book and she was like you need to read this and I was like oh gosh are you kidding me I mean I had a very low opinion of twilight I just did and she's like Rose listen you have to read it and so I did it and oh my gosh I had so many feels reading that book I just tore through that entire series I couldn't get enough right like I was starving to death and somebody gave me food for the first time and I was like oh my god this is wonderful I was inspired by Twilight not I mean yes the book but mostly because of the author Stephanie Meyer because she published and wrote that book in her 40s as a stay-at-home mom with this family and I was like what people can do that I mean it's like you can do it and it works and you can actually have success and it's a thing. So I was super motivated by Twilight and Stephanie Meyer. I was like, I'm going to do it, but it still took me a few years to actually do it. And then when I finally sat down to write, this story just spilled out of me, the final life series, because I think I was just in my brain getting ready you know so when I sat down it's just like a stream of consciousness writing and this book flowed out and guess what it was terrible <laughs> it was terrible I got a writing coach and I sent her my manuscript and she did things old school with a red pen and she sent it back to me and it was just a sea of red and then she sent me this like 10 page document on all of the things that I needed to fix and work on. And I still remember my ego just being completely shattered. And I put it away for a few weeks. I didn't even want to look at it because I was like, ugh, it's like gut-wrenching. And then I pulled it out and then I got to work. Many different revisions later and edits later, Final Life was born. And I still did not know enough about the industry to know what to do with writing a series. I had long gaps between the books because I was still practicing and still working and still had, you know, my little kids that I needed to remember. I have little kids. I got to do st stuff with them. And then I was tired. I had these big, long gaps between my releases, which is, you know, not very good. Finally, I'm kind of doing things, I don't know, the right way. Is there really a right way? I don't know. I'm doing things differently. <laughs> I think there's a right way. There is this our way in whatever way that fits us. And sometimes we work so hard to try to do the right things that it becomes overwhelmed. I honestly feels like it's a lifestyle. You know, 
everything we do, everything we say and feel goes into our writing. So it becomes so much more than just, I'm writing a book, you know, I'm taking you on a journey and this journey might take us who knows where, but we're going there. So wrap yeah. it up. Yeah, exactly. So I am so excited that you committed, that you said, I'm doing this and that you decided I'm leaving my practice to do this. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. That was scary. I mean, you know, it was a very scary thing to let go of that security and that income and that world that I had worked so hard for working so hard in, in college to get good grades, to take the LSAT, to get accepted into law school, the th three long, hard years of law school, the bar exam. Oh my God. You know, the three day exam from hell. Then practicing, practicing was a struggle. Of course it was wonderful. And I loved it. And I actually really loved law school, which some people think what I loved law school. It was probably the best time of my life, better than college, because I was with like-minded people. I was with these people that were so much more like me than anywhere else. And so leaving that, that was hard. That was really, really hard. And with my husband's support, you know, he's my number one fan. He was like, yes, do it, do it, do it. He's the one that kept telling me, you need to write, you need to write because he knew it was my dream. And then there was this one year for Christmas that he gave me this little handheld recorder. I could like dictate my thoughts and my outlines and maybe even start writing. And he gave it to me and I was like, oh, he's so great. I was like, okay, and I'm getting older and I really want to do what I want to do. And we were in a place where we could do it. We could take that hit and we could just do it. It was hard, but yeah, it was so amazing doing what I really wanted to be doing. One of the things that for everybody who's just listening, if you can't hear it in her voice, every time she talks about it, she's glowing. There is a passion that comes when you're doing what you want to and you're following your dream. And it's yes. fun because you were still excited about law school. So it wasn't a torture because it goes with your personality. Yeah. But writing just comes out of you and you just are passionate about these stories and your characters and the part of you. So I think when our listeners who are interested in becoming writers, it's something to remember is sometimes taking that leap is hard and scary and you can do both for a while. Just remember, you're going to be tired. You're going to be tired, but you can still have a blast. So I love it. I feel like writing is like being in love. I'm giddy. Every time I write, I feel just kind of giddy and excited. It's a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. And so many times we listen to like, you know, the struggle of artists and all the struggles that comes with writing. Like, it should be fun. Yeah. You should have a blast. Yeah. Tell me, sweetie, what have you learned in this journey? Because you've been doing this for a decade. Like, that's I, impressive. Like, that is impressive. What is man. the lessons learned that you can tell somebody coming in? I have learned so much. And I don't even know where to begin with that question because I have learned so much about the craft and the industry and even myself, you know, gosh, what's, I guess my number one thing that I would say to aspiring writers is, of course, you need to read a lot. You need to write a lot. You really need to know your genre, but you really also need to connect. You need to connect with the writing community. And you need to find the people that you can go to for advice and people to help you grow as a writer. And for me, at the very beginning of my career, it was my local writing group. It was the Houston SCBWI, Society of Children Book Writers and Illustrators. I went to their meetings. And they also had a little subgroup called YAMG, Young Adult Middle Grade Writers. I went to that religiously. Every Saturday I was at a meeting. And then eventually, and I learned a lot, but then eventually I kind of just moved into my mastermind group that I connected with by chance. I mean, it wasn't even anything that I was looking for. It's so strange because I was on this 
Facebook group. And Facebook is a really great way to connect with other writers. And I was in this group and somebody posted on there, does anybody want to get together as a group to help each other with our Instagram posts? And I was like, oh, sure, I'll do it. Cause you know, I'm not all for it. And so I was in this group of, I don't know, 20 authors and we would encourage each other with our posting and like each other's posts and comment on each other's posts. And then we just started connecting more, got even closer and some people dropped off. Then we moved it to a Facebook group so that we could really share craft ideas and inspiration. And so we had our little group and then it transitioned into a Zoom. So for me, my biggest advice is to find a group and find a place where you can learn and grow with like-minded people and elevate yourself as a writer, because that's what it's all about. We're, we're trying to grow and we're trying to connect and trying to help each other. Amazing advice. And sometimes it feels like we're by ourselves. Let's be honest, like writing is a yes. really lonely profession. Tell me, sweetie, where can our listeners find you? Oh, so if you go to my website, rosegarciabooks.com, you will see all of my social media links at the top of my page. And you can follow me everywhere. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm newly on TikTok. Oh my gosh. I've taken the plunge with TikTok and I post the most ridiculous things. And I'm, I'm just everywhere. I'm around. I'm very easy to find. Yeah. RoseGarciaBooks.com, basically. <laughs> Down my left. Before we leave you, are you ready for a lightning round? Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Easy peasy. Don't think too much about these. Let's do these. Coffee or tea? Water. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Breakfast or dinner? Dinner. I like, I like. City or country? City. I'm a city girl. Through and Houston. Through. Yeah. Cats or dogs? Dogs, of course. Hey, okay. it happens. Here's a little different one. Put in your thinking hat. If your main character, and you can pick either one you like, had a theme song, what would it be? Oh, gosh, a theme song? I think that Julio would listen to, I'm just going to go with Infinity because she's goofy. And I'm going to say Selena. Bitty, bitty, bum, bum. Nice. <laughs> That's really good for like quick and on the spot. I love it. Yeah. I also have that song referenced in Fay Bloodlines. It is Julio's mom's ringtone. Oh, yeah. This is meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sweetie, do you have any closing remarks for us? My only remark is that you, my friend, DC, are amazing. And I love your energy and your vibe big time. And we need to like stay together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So to all of our listeners, she's fabulous. It's nothing. <laughs> she is this perky all the time. So it's I am. here all the time. She's an absolute extrovert, which is awesome. So my friend, thank you so much for joining me. It is such a pleasure. I had so much fun. To me too. Yes, I had a blast. It was so much fun. It was meant yeah. to be. So yes, yeah. to our listeners, make sure you pick up Ms. Rose's book because they're fabulous. You have an entire universe you can check out. Go ahead. Give us a like wherever you're watching this, whatever channel you're picking us up. Give us some love. Give us a review if you can. Share it with somebody. Invite other people to join our community. Know we're always doing better together. And guess what? We'll be back next week with so much more exciting authors to bring you. So welcome to season three, my friends. Have an amazing time. Bye, everyone. Bye.